Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Recently I was overwhelmed with the positive response I've gotten from doing the painting and weathering on the Snow Tiger. So I've decided to do a much more in-depth, step-by-step process of using hairspray to, to get the chip and weathering effect that you would get on this. So today we're going to take our already built, painted and weathered slightly model of a Panther D from Tamiya. And we're going to try to take this and turn it into something like this. Let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to answer just a couple other questions that uh, a lot of people have been asking about thinning, first of all. Thinning paint, I, I primarily use Tamiya paint. I like the way it goes on with the airbrush. What I do for thinning is when I get a brand new bottle, I'll open up the bottle and there's an air gap in here of about maybe about a third of an inch. I will take either Tamiya's lacquer thinner or Tamiya X20 regular thinner, take it and top this bottle off, leaving one or two millimeters from the top of the bottle. Fill that with thinner, take the bottle, shake it up, and this entire bottle will be ready to airbrush. Uh, it works great. The other question I get a lot is what kind of airbrush I use. I use an Iwata HPC airbrush. Uh, it's a gravity feed brush. Uh, has a real fine point on it. Does a great, great job doing fine detail. I absolutely love this brush. I do have a small compressor that's off camera right now. Uh, has a small tank on it. Really quiet and I can do it here in the hobby store in between customers. Okay, I want to show you a little closer look at the effects we're going to try to achieve. Okay, step one. You're going to need to have your vehicle painted and completely clear coated with like a dull coat, a lacquer clear coat, and that'll protect anything that we're about to do to the underneath paint. Next, we're going to take our hairspray. I use something that I took out of my wife's uh, vanity closet called Tresemme. Uh, we're going to give it two really wet coats. Not so it's dripping off, but just so it's wet enough on there that you look like you didn't miss any spots. Let the first coat dry completely for about 5-10 minutes and then go over it again with a lighter coat just to make sure you haven't missed anything. This will make it easier for taking the paint off later on. Step 2, we're going to take white uh, from Tamiya XF1 and I put just a touch of buff in it. About 20 parts to 1 with that uh, just so it just doesn't have such a stark white appearance to it. We're going to take it and we're going to start airbrushing the entire model. We don't want to make the model too, too white and cover up everything like it was like dipped in paint. You want to leave some little areas that are lighter than others as if the paint was, the whitewash was put on and it, you know, didn't do a great job covering everything. And this will also make it easier and you'll get different tones when you go to scrub it off. Now this video that's coming up is going to be a little bit longer than normal because I'm not going to do any speeding up motion on any of the filming. We're going to show you exactly what I'm doing and step by step and this way if you have any questions you can stop the film, watch what we're doing, watch it again. Uh, a lot of people wanted to see how this was done and then the speeding up sometimes you might miss a little piece here and there. So sorry if it's a little long of a video but like I said that's why you can always fast forward on YouTube. Now we're going to start spraying the inside of the wheels uh, as close as possible to it without trying not to get too much on the actual rubber. It's just going to be that much less we have to take off later on. And as you can see here, I haven't completely covered everything with the white paint.
One thing I want to show you too is not speeding up the film. Really take a look at the way the model looks right now. It's it's not stark white. It's not completely covered. It just has almost as if they put it on with an air gun and the guy's in a hurry and he just wants to spray the thing down so they don't get shot at. Uh, but you can still see some of the yellow, the, the dark red, and the dark green showing through. This will give it a nice look later on. Okay, we're going to start on the turret right now, and you'll see how glossy the paint has actually become with the hairspray coming up here. Uh, one thing too, when you're going to paint over the insignia, whether it be numbers or the national insignia or any other symbols they have on it, don't go super heavy on that area. Uh, that area would have been left open a little bit more, mainly because it is identification marks and they wouldn't have covered them up greatly. So there would be overspray on them and stuff, but we'll take some of that excess off in a few minutes here. Okay, now we're going to start to remove some of the paint. Uh, this process right here, you're going to take a, a fairly stiff paint or toothbrush or paintbrush, either one will work. I'm using a toothbrush right here. Uh, you're going to dip it in water and put a little bit of water on the, the, the top of the paint and it's going to need to soak in for a few seconds. So you're going to be scrubbing for a little while, a couple of seconds before anything happens. Don't worry about that. As soon as the water soaks into the hairspray, it'll start to pop up and you'll start to see chunks of it come off. And when it start, starts happening, stop scrubbing so hard and just start going a little bit lighter. And also, as you start to get to these big flat areas, you want to maintain the, the way the scratches would go from top to bottom, and not too much from side to side because most of it would be running off from, from rain or snow or guys sliding off or pulling parts off the front of the tank. It's going to want to kind of all flow towards the bottom of the tank.
Another good reason of not speeding up the film is you can actually see how the paint begins to come off. I'll be scrubbing in an area for a few seconds and nothing's happening, nothing's happening, and then boom, it starts to really come off quickly. So you gotta, you gotta really be paying attention to what you're doing. Okay, as you're removing the paint, don't worry if you've taken off too much paint in one area. Uh, one thing I like to do when we're doing this type of technique is to do it in two layers. And we'll show you that in a few seconds. So if you have an area that you think you took too much paint on, it, don't worry about it. We'll fix it in a few seconds.
Okay, as we start working around the turret and any of the areas on the hull that are have a lot of little fragile parts, obviously be very, very careful. The toothbrush is very stiff, and if you bump any of the pieces the wrong way, uh, you're going to send a grab handle or something else going flying, and then it's really hard to find. So just try to do more of the bigger open areas anyway. Okay, before the next step, you're going to want to take a paper towel and kind of blot off any of the excess water and paint debris. Now that the model is completely dried, we're going to give it another coat, not super heavy, of hairspray. And once again, coat it completely and then let it dry completely as well. Okay, once that layer of hairspray has dried, which shouldn't take very long, you're going to want to take XF2, just the stark white again, flat version of it, and just starts misting over the entire model again, hitting some of the areas, heavier in areas that you thought you took too much paint off, and just go over and give it like a second, second layer. This is going to build up a little bit of depth in the model. As you can see, I don't go super heavy into the areas where I've already removed paint. We just kind of want to give it a little mist on it there to show that there's still some remnants of whitewash or they didn't put it on super heavy in that area. Now taking your stiff paintbrush or toothbrush again, you're going to want to do the exact same process over again. This time just not try not to take as much off and you can actually do multiple multiple coats of this but usually two I find to get the uh, the look I'm looking for.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way the paint's looking right here. Well, let's give it the second scrub down. Okay, I think I've gotten the model the way I wanted here. I didn't take too much paint off. Left a little bit more paint on than the earlier Tiger that we did. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put a pin wash on, and that's going to break up some of the stark white that we have on this. Okay, in this step right here, we're going to take a little Vallejo model wash. I'm using light rust, and there's a little bit of water in this bowl right here, as you can see. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of droplets on the sidewall. Kind of like that. That'll kind of blend it up. And on this side, I'm going to put just like a drop or two of a dark khaki green kind of give it a muddier color and what we're going to do with that is we're going to use that to start to do a, a pin wash on it okay using our pin wash we're going to just lightly just put it in some of these tight little areas right here around any seams And because we thin the paint or the wash way down, you might have to do a couple of multi or multiple coats on this to get it to look the way you want. You can already start to see just doing just a little bit of that it starts to make some of the pieces pop out a little bit more. have a paper towel around too that if you don't like the way something's looking a little too dark you can blot off any of the excess. Kind of want to have a real light hand at this portion. Just putting just a little bit on because you can always put on multiple coats. And although we used a light rust on this, it's actually turning out more like a dirt, which we want. So you can actually put it over all different parts of it.
Okay, now we're going to use a little brown wash and we're going to pour it kind of on the edge again and we're going to do a second layer over all of this area, kind of darken up so we get a multiple tones of dirt. Okay, in this step right now, we're going to use some Tamiya Weathering Master, set B, and this has the snow, soot, and rust on it. We're going to start off with the soot first, and a little bit on the brush, and then we're going to start to go over some of the edges of these wheels right here. And this will take off any of the excess snow that we don't want on there, kind of darken up the road wheels. It'll still leave a little bit coming through. Gives it a nice smeared, dirty effect, but still makes it look like rubber.
Okay, using that same soot from Tamiya, we're going to start going over some of the high edges on here and give it a little worn look on upper parts of the turret and the hull. Okay, in this step, I'm going to use some artist oil, some oil paints. I'm using a little raw sienna and burnt umber, kind of mixed together and thinned down a little bit. And we're going to wet down the tracks a little bit. It's going to kind of give them a, kind of a little bit of a wet, dirty, grungy effect to it. Well, that's all the major steps involved in doing the whitewash camouflage with the hairspray effect. Uh, obviously, you could put more or less. You can do more weathering on top of it. That's all up to you, just as long as you go out there and build. I hope you enjoyed our video, and you have a wonderful afternoon.